the English Standard Version of this 12th verse. Look at the ESV. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers and authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. I like that phrase, this present darkness, because that's what Paul saw when he looked around was a present darkness. It's not an eternal darkness. It's a present darkness. It's the one that attacks us. But how many of you realize, man, when it's dark and it's dark in your soul, it's dark. I mean, there's no words somebody can say to get you out of it. You need a revelatory experience of meeting Jesus and who he really is. F. Scott Fitzgerald said, in the real dark night of the soul, it is always 3 o'clock in the morning. I just thought that was a really powerful way to put it. Because you ever notice it's like, you know, 3 a.m. is like you, you wake up and the stress of yesterday's there and the fear of tomorrow's there. And it's three hours past midnight and three hours till the sun comes up. And it might as well be an eternity from both. That's kind of like a, just like a metaphor for what darkness looks like and what darkness is. I said this. I didn't put a lot of little quips or principles, but th look at this next one. This is just something I, I really wanted to convey. Darkness is not only an invisible and spiritual and social state. Darkness in its basis forms is really just the absence of love and compassion. You show a people, you refuse to show a people who they are in the, in, the, in the face of their God and how much he loves them and the compassion that he has on them and what you will push them into is darkness. A darkness that, that they cannot come back from, that ends in death and suicide and all kinds of hell and on the way down that road because they've, they've been void of love and compassion. We, we failed for generations in the church to convey the love of God. We made people qualify for it and pay for it and work to stay in it. And then we were amazed that the church is falling apart and you know crowds are going down and people don't want to be a part of it anymore. Why are we amazed? I mean, if you present a God that doesn't love people until they do the right thing and has no compassion on people, uh, why would anybody want to be a part of that darkness? We're made for more than that. You really want to know what the darkness, how to overcome it in this world, there's really just one real simple way. Look at 1 John chapter 2. Same author, different, little, different letter, 1 John 2, 9. He who says he's in the light and hates his brothers in darkness till now. He who loves his brother abides in the light and there's no cause for stumbling in him. He who hates his brothers in darkness and walks in darkness and doesn't know where he is going because... Darkness has blinded his eyes. It's almost as if John makes it too simple. You know, because he brings it down to the bare bones and he goes, look, if you think you're in the light but you don't, you don't love people, you're not in the light, you're in darkness. So I really, I think what John's trying to say is this. You want to know the real definition of darkness? It's this. It's having no love and having no compassion on those around you. But it's not just that. It's, it's not receiving the love that the Father has for you. Not seeing yourself through the eyes of love the way the Father sees you. Only seeing yourself through the eyes of performance. Having no compassion on your own condition. I, I think we, we spend a lot of time in the Grace Church talking about loving each other, and we don't spend a lot of time about, not, I don't think, enough time, receiving the love of the Father for us in our current state. Knowing that the Father loves us, and this is hard to swallow for a lot of us, but He loves us just the way we are. Like, I'm okay with you. I'm, I'm, some people can't, they, they could never amen that because all they're doing is thinking of someone. So immediately start thinking of someone going, he can't be happy with that guy because I'm in the way that guy is. I didn't, say, I didn't say the father is always excited about the way we act. I mean, my God, I love my kids, but I'm always excited about the way they act. And that's just life. I don't, I don't think the father's always jumping up and down at my, the way I treat the cashier. You know, guy cuts me off in traffic, and I let all of heaven and hell know about it, and they cab my truck. I don't think God's going, yay, way to go, Paul. <laughs> but he knows it about me, and he loves me in spite of myself. And I have to know that, because if I don't know that, then I'm going to go look for love somewhere else. I'm going to go look for that, fill that void somewhere else. So the and I'm not, compassion's not pity. Compassion's is, is a whole different thing. It's understanding who people are, where they are.